G'day folks. Well, first of all, this is a new camera that I'm using, so if you are watching this and you notice anything that's dodgy or just doesn't look right or doesn't sound right, could you let me know in the comments or just by contacting me? Now, this is the Tangram Cube, and I've had this for a little bit, and I haven't really had time to get around to solving it yet, and, uh, well, certainly to making a video of it. Well, before I scramble it, let's just have a quick look at the types of pieces that are going on here. This is a bit of a confusing cube initially. And it doesn't turn as you'd think, and you think you've got it figured out with that. And I think in my unboxing I, you know, proclaimed that there were, the axes turned 180, or maybe they turned 120. I actually do both, so there's a 120 degree turn. And then if we go over to something like uh, this one here, that won't turn 120 before it comes back. In fact, it'll turn 90, but you can't do anything. You've got to turn that 180 before it'll do anything. So you've got three axes that turn on 180 degrees. And this is just like the crazy pentahedron. And when I say just like it, I mean it's the same sort of puzzle. So what was confusing initially is seeing that this here is the top center of the top face. So there's a face like that, and there's a similar bottom face, and then you've got this strip in the middle. And so you've got the center here, you've got some edges on the top. And if we put that back, what we'll see is we think, well, if it's like the pentahedron, where are the sort of the three left and right and back faces, so to speak? Well, they're those ones that turn 180, like that. And because it's hard to see and hold, there's another one. And there's another one that'll be somewhere else. I can't, I almost can't even see it now. Uh, where is it gone? I assure you it's here. Don't worry, I'll find it when I'm solving it properly. So it is just very difficult to get your, your was that it right there? There it is. Boom. Yeah, so there's three of them. And you almost just have to squint and kind of tilt your head to a 45 degree angle and then hope that it works. So I'm going to scramble it up now and we'll see how we go about solving it. Okay, well that's probably as good a scramble as we can hope for almost. Now, the first thing to do is note that the middle band needs to be dealt with. And if we turn one of these 180 degree faces, we notice that it's the long part that just rotates in place. It's actually those small little pieces here that are doing the turning. So the first thing is we want to get the long parts, the long bands into their correct orientation. The way we're going to do that is look at the top and bottom centers. So I see here that this top center has blue yellow and red. So there's the yellow and red. I want that yellow to match up if it's going to match up there at all. You might think initially, well, hang on, that's a green. Doesn't that need to match? No, because it's not on the same face. So next we'll go and see here that we've got a red that matches that one there. We travel around here. That white, that's okay with that one because that's a blue on that face. And so we know that we've got this band correct. We've got it in that or that center there, we just turn it upside down and get the center on the other side to match. You'll see here there's a white piece, that's green. Also, this is orange, that's white. So we want to turn that around so that everything matches. And now everywhere you look, you look at that band and the pieces on the top and the bottom center will match. Okay, so that's the first thing. The next thing is to get these little pieces here to just use an edge piece series to cycle them home. Now, for example, blue, white, where's that got to go? That's got to go to here. The orange yellow has got to go to here. So we can just do a normal edge piece series on the 180 degree faces. So this is like one of them and then one of them and then undo. Now what you're going to find when you do that is either you'll have all three of these little edges completely correct and oriented correctly or you'll have one of them oriented correctly and two others not. So if that happens, as has happened in this case, what we want to do is just note, there's one, there's another one, and the third one, I'm just gonna call it at the back there. I wanna do an edge piece series that turns one of these onto the back and then turns the other one onto the back. So here we go. Just like that. Then that one goes around because that's the other one that was incorrect. Then bring them back. And what that's gonna achieve firstly is leaving these large central pieces correct. And then I'm going to look and see what's got to go where of these ones. Red, green, that's got to go to here. Now, when, if I turn it, I note that that is going to orient correctly. 
good. What about the orange-yellow? That's going this way. Yep, that also orients correctly. The blue-white, therefore, will orient not correctly. And that's one thing that's going to be accomplished by doing that move, is we want to locate the two that are going to turn correctly, which was the green-red and the orange-yellow. And so I just want to do my HP series in that direction now. So the green-red onto the orange-yellow, and then the one that was incorrect gets to turn last. So here we go. Around, and that one comes around, and then we undo those moves. And what we'll see when we've done that is we look along that band, and that is now completely done. So that's the first main part of it. Now the next part is, you remember that we had these little centers, or sorry, these large centers lined up with the band. We want to place these edges, these big pieces between the top and bottom centers and the central band. Now they can't be oriented wrongly. So all we need to do is find one that goes here. So a yellow blue, for example, there's a yellow blue. And we're going to turn it in using an edge piece series. Uh, for example, I'm going to turn that one into there, and then this will be my third piece. So I'll turn that one into its position, turn that around, and undo those moves. Now, thinking what's happened, again, the central band is still correct. The top and bottom centers are still correct. But what's happened now is we've put that piece where it belongs. So I might move around and see if I can do the same thing here with a white red. In fact, it's really a blue red there, which is just here. So that piece, that piece, I need a third piece. Let's use that one. So we'll turn that up, turn it off and undo those moves. And we've got that one in now. Now we've got this piece here, which is the yellow red. I've got one piece left on that layer. So I'm just going to turn that upside down and call it the bottom layer because that's the way I work. Uh, let me try and get, um, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? I just really would prefer not to get this piece because it just makes it easier. So the orange green, yep, that goes there. So let's put that one in. I can use the one on the back left. There we go. So that orange green's in. I've got the white green here. Where's that got to go? Up here. And this white orange will have to go around to here. And the red yellow will need to come back to there. So I'm just going to, as a setup, turn that top face around. So the white green goes to there. Turn the yellow red on. You'll see it all coming together at the end. And then we can turn that back. Now we did that setup move. So we'll just undo that setup move. And you can see at this stage, everything's been done really simply. And the only thing left is, well, I said everything's been done. Everything that we've attempted to do so far, we have done fairly simply. The only thing left now is these small triangular pieces, which are, well, they're kind of the corners on the pentahedron. I don't know what you'd call them here. Let's just call them the small triangles. Now, this is a, a great cube to show a, a nice little commutator. And the key thing about a commutator is isolating one piece on a face that changes where the whole rest of the face doesn't change. We're going to see that in action here. Uh, so let's have a look firstly. What am I going to look for? I'm going to find one that's going to work really well. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay. Now, what you're looking for is remember this central band here is kind of the middle, and we've got a top and we've got a bottom. Now, any of these 180 degree faces, like that one, I'm calling left and whatever else. I actually only use the left one of these ones. So I'm just looking for three corners or three triangles where I go one goes up to here. So this one goes up to here. And then this one can go anywhere it likes. And then a third one on this top face can come back down to there. That's the three cycle we're going to do. So in this case, it would make sense that the white goes here. The green is going to go to there. This yellow will come back down. That's all that's going to be moved, those three pieces. Now, how are we going to do it? We're going to change everything on this top face. And by the top face, I'm talking about that, except for... I think it's this piece. Let's just do it and we'll see what happens. So the move, remembering that this is my top face here. If that's my top face, what's my bottom face? That's right, it's that one. That's my down face. So here we go. Now the commutator goes left. And I'm just saying left. It's left two, of course, but that's all you can do. So left, down, left, down prime, left. 
That's the first part of it. Now let's see what has happened on this top face. Um, you'll notice, in fact, that didn't change. That has changed. That little white piece was down here, remember, and that's gone up to there. That was already orange. That little yellow is back there. You say, wait a minute, what about that blue? Yeah, but that's not on the face. If you look at the face that we're talking about, it's this top face. If we turn that around, you'll notice on that top face, the only thing that has changed is this piece here. And so now we're going to move the third piece into its position. That's the whole point and key of a commutator, a 3-1, well, really any commutator. So I've moved that in. So in this case, because my third piece was at the sort of the back left position, I've done a U prime. If that piece was in this position here at the back right, or the upright, whatever I want to call it, I would have done a U turn. Now, having done that, I undo the first stuff. And guess what the undoing is? In this case, it's exactly the same. So it's a left, down, left, down prime, left. And now to complete the move, I did do a U prime here, so I'm going to undo that U prime. And you'll notice that the white piece has gone where it should. That green piece has gone where it should. And there was a yellow piece there, which has cycled home to there. That is really simple, really nice to see. And I'm sure you'll agree, not too hard to remember. Now that is going to leave us just three pieces left, yellow, blue, and red. It doesn't matter where they are. All that you want to do is think, uh, well, which direction would I really like to go here? Because I'd like to get one so that it's going from here to there. So that's uh, that doesn't really suit me. Um, oh, they're all in horrible positions. I don't like this at all. But anyway, I'm going to go with it. Let's go. Ideally, if I could get the yellow one to there. You know what? It actually, it doesn't matter. Let's do it backwards. Why don't we do that? Yeah, let's do it backwards. So I think the first thing that I'll do is get the problem that I'm facing, by the way, is all three pieces are on the one layer. That's my issue. They're all on sort of the top layer. So what I might do initially is just do a setup turn here and see what that does. Does that help? It kind of does. It's not going to look like it does, but it sort of does. Um, we're going to... This is going to be quite a convoluted little setup. Now, at that point, I can remember the setup. That's no problem. You can see what I've done there is to get this in a position where the blue is going to go here. And then I'm going to need my third piece, which is my red piece, somewhere else on that top layer. Now, I'm almost lost here so I'm just going to remember what have I done a u-turn this is my setup now I've got to get that red piece up to either of those positions and I'm guessing it's back there so I'm just going to do a back turn to put it in that position so I've done u and then back let's hope I can remember that because now I've got my three pieces exactly where I want them so let's carry out the um, sequence it's a left two down, left two, down prime, left two. Okay, the blue's in. My third piece was over here, so I've got to turn it this way. Undo. And then undo that U-turn, which puts it back there. Now, what were my setups? I had a U-turn and a back, and I think the back was this one. So I'll undo that. I'll undo my U-turn, and then I can clearly see this one, and uh, that puts everything back. So that is the Tangram cube. There's nothing more to it than that. There's no hidden surprises that I've come across. And uh, fairly simple. The only thing really to remember is that, that um, sequence at the end, which is fairly straightforward. I hope that made sense. Thanks for watching.